Hello friends and welcome to another episode of A Shot of Code. Today I'm going to be looking at using properties and attributes within Polymer 3. Uh, so let's jump in. First thing we're going to need is a class for our component, which we'll call MyAppJS. Um, and we need to uh, name my app. And for Polymer, we extend Polymer element. Uh, we have some boilerplate code on here, just a constructor called super. Uh, now, to give your component its visual uh, appearance, we provide a static get template, which will return in this case, just going to put together um, a very sort of simple counter component. So let's create a div there and just say count. And the property will um, will bind to the, the property you're going to use, which is our score, let's say. And close that off there. So... Uh, one other bit of boilerplate is a static get is just to name our component my app with the hyphen. Okay, now uh, you can picture in your HTML page, we'll um, add the, the element my dash app, and on there we can provide um, an initial value for the score. We want that attribute to be propagated into um, the property score within our element. Um, so to configure this in Polymer, we set up a static um, get properties. And in here, we return an object uh, with a list of all our properties. In this case, we've just got a name property um, and we want to specify what type it is, what its initial value is, and, and what its name. Um, so simply specify its name, and then we can specify things like type, um, and it's just going to be a number, um, and value. So its default value, if nothing is specified as an attribute, will be uh, zero. Okay, and that's that there. So let's um, register our element. Because I'm going to find my app is uh, and my app. Okay. So if we pull in um, the latest version of Polymer, maybe on. Add at polymer polymer at next, then we'll be able to import that up here, and we can pull in polymer element from let's go down polymer 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 element js. So that's that should be our components, and it's got property uh, type name, and I should call it score there, aren't I? Cool. Now let's call it, let's keep it with score. Score. So score and score. Right, so let's create a HTML page to show this in. Uh, index dot HTML. And fill that up. So let's pull in our component, uh, myapp.js. We need to say it's type module. And then let's put myapp on. So 
for the moment, if we don't put any attributes on there, we should see it pick up the default and just display that. So let's bring that up with polyserve. Control resolution mode. So we need these steps now because there's a build step with Polo 3 now um, because our imports are using bare imports. There's no node modules path there. Right, so let's bring that up and see what it's giving us so far. Okay, so we've got uh, count zero there, which is what we're expecting. Let's bring the tools up in case we need them. Okay, so if we now add an attribute on here of oh, score, and give it a value of five and then refresh that, we should then see count five. So what by providing that um, method here, we have, what Polymer 3 has given us is this whole linkage between the two, um, between the attributes and, and the property. Now, the default binding is um, to come in from the attributes into the element. We can also on here, if you wanted to make it a two-way binding, would be to add um, a notify of true, and then whenever we update it in, um, in our, um, our component itself, it would reflect that back onto the, uh, back onto the element. I'm going to do that just for this one. Um, but that is what it gives us. Now, if we wanted to do this um, without Polymer, we would be getting involved in quite, quite a lot of extra work. We would need to set up an observed attribute method like this and return an array of, of the ones we want to actually monitor, so we'd have score in there. Um, and then we'd have to have a, um, a get for score. Um, and then you start getting into this whole, where is your source of truth? You know, is it the attributes on your element or is it the property? Um, so, you know, a common, common technique is to, to use the attribute as, as the source. So here we would return um, this dot get attribute um, score um, and then for the set which will take a, a value we would literally set that attribute so everything gets stored in the attribute um, set attribute score and then and then the new value um, so you'd need those three, and then you'd also um, want to have an attribute changed callback as well, so that you could then refresh your component. So you've got a band you so I'll try show you that one. Um, um, attribute changed callback, which takes the name and the old value and then new value. Um, and then like redraw in here. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of work. Um, you know, picture you've got five, ten, whatever how many properties you're going to have to do this for each one of those. Whereas with Polymer, you're just going to need to use this uh, this get properties method. Um, yeah, there you go. I um, hope that was helpful. Um, thanks very much. Bye.